Hi guys, this is the first video on the carbon and water cycles. In this video we will be understanding the systems framework, learning about different types of feedback and learning how systems are classified. So firstly we're going to look at system frameworks and their application. And in geography and in many other sciences we use systems and models to simplify complex processes that are occurring so that we can understand them better. And examples of systems that we look at in geography are the carbon cycle and the water cycle. The carbon cycle is how carbon as an element is cycled around the earth through plants and in the atmosphere and this is the same for water and how water is cycled through its different sores such as the atmosphere, the oceans, rivers and so on. And in the rest of the videos we're going to be looking at the carbon and water cycles in greater detail. So what is a system? A system is a set of interrelated components working together towards a process. So in this process within a system we have stores and we also have flows between the stores. And the other characteristics we have of systems are inputs and outputs. So these are the four major characteristics of a system and the systems we're going to look at later on all have these four components. So for example in the water cycle we have our inputs which is things like precipitation or rain and our outputs are things like evaporation and the stores and components and flows that we have for example in the water cycle would be a lake and a flow would be something like groundwater flow or stem flow which we're going to look at later on but groundwater flow is the seeping of water through the ground so those are examples of the components that we have within systems Next we're going to look at the classification of systems and this is because not all systems have the same characteristics and they can act differently. So we tend to have three different types of systems and the first type is an isolated system and this is a system that has no interactions outside its boundaries and these type of systems are very rare and they don't occur in nature. They mostly occur when experiments are taking place in a laboratory. So these are, don't happen in nature, but the types that we do have happening in nature are what are called open and closed systems. And open systems are those when the boundary around a system has the potential for both matter and energy to transfer across it. So that means matter is in like living things like plants and animals and energy in terms of things like solar radiation or wind. And an example of this is an ecosystem. So ecosystems are places on Earth where animals and plants act together and interact with their environment. And obviously plants and animals can move in and out of the environment and that's what makes it an open system. An animal is not confined within an ecosystem. Whereas on the other hand, we have closed systems and closed systems are different in that matter cannot be transferred in and out of it. Only energy can be transferred in and out, such as solar energy or wind energy. But no actual matter is being moved out of the boundaries of the system. And there aren't also very many examples of this in real life. They are very rare. So to give you a bit of more of an idea of how open systems work, as we mentioned before, we have in our system to have inputs, stores, flows and outputs. So in an open system, it's more linear. So we have an input going into a store, then we can might have a flow or a transfer of energy between the stores, and then we have an output at the end. Whereas in a closed system, everything is being cycled back. There's no movement beyond the system of matter. So we have our store and you have an output which feeds back into our input and goes back into the store. So as you can see, that is the difference between a closed and an open system. And we just need to know that this is the format of open and closed systems. When we're learning about systems and processes, it's also really important to learn about feedback. And feedback is the relationship between the inputs and outputs. So it's almost like the balance between inputs and outputs in the system. 
And where we have no feedback, we call this dynamic equilibrium. And this is where the inputs are equal to the outputs. So the stores stay the same, they don't increase or decrease. And an example of this is, for example, a glacier. And a glacier might have an input, which would be snow, and an output, which would be melting. And dynamic equilibrium means that the glacier is staying the same size because there is an equal amount of snow and an equal amount of melting taking place. Therefore, the overall net gain is zero. So the glacier is not decreasing in size or increasing in size. It's staying the same. And that's what dynamic equilibrium is. However, we have things called positive feedback and negative feedback. And this is when our inputs and outputs are not balanced. And when we have positive feedback, this is where the effects are amplified in the system, which means they are increasing. So an example of this is global warming. And this cycle here shows how global warming is part of a positive feedback cycle. Now, we don't need to know about global warming in detail, but it's just to show you how positive feedback works. So we may start off with a global rise in temperature. This would then cause the temperatures of the oceans to increase. And there's CO2, carbon dioxide, dissolved in the oceans. And when the ocean temperatures increase, the dissolved CO2 is lost back into the atmosphere. So the CO2 is released by the oceans. And then when the CO2 is released back into the atmosphere, this causes global temperatures to increase even more. So that's an example of positive feedback because the global temperature rise, which is the output of the system, is being amplified. So it's getting warmer and warmer. So that's what positive feedback means. Where on the other hand, the opposite of this is negative feedback. And this is when the effects of a system or a process are being reduced. Or in other words, the effects are nullified. So this means that any input or effect that's taking place is being cancelled. So for example, in this example, we're using plant growth and photosynthesis to show you an example of negative feedback. So where we might have an increase in fossil fuel use, which releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, this may cause more plant growth because plants consume carbon dioxide in photosynthesis, which is the process they use to make their own energy or food for themselves. And through the plants growing and then consuming the CO2, this reduces atmospheric CO2. So here an increase is actually being nullified because of the plants. So the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere is actually being reduced in this cycle. And that's an example of negative feedback. So that's when the effects are being nullified or cancelled out. And lastly, I'm going to talk to you about cascading systems. So this is where we have a series of open systems which form a chain. And this happens in many cycles or processes on Earth, including the water cycle, which is what we're going to look at in the next few videos. And just so that you understand this, a cascading system is where the outputs of one system are feeding into the inputs of the next system. So here we have our inputs, store, output. So that's one system, an open system, and the outputs of this system are feeding into the inputs of the next system. And we're going to go into this in more detail in the next video, but this is just to give you an idea. Cascading is almost like a waterfall, and this could happen and continue further on. So these outputs here would feed into the inputs of another system. So that is what's called a cascading system, almost like a waterfall, it's cascading downwards. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level geography resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. See you soon and together let's make A-level geography a walk in the park.